Hey, hey, what is up, Andrew? It is YouTube here once again. We are back with another Dromeo video. We're a famous, incredible drummer. Here's a song for the first time and plays it without ever hearing the drum part, mind you. Always interesting stuff. Now remember guys, as a subscriber of my channel, you get access to a full and free 30 day trial over at Dromeo. So you can go get that. And actually at the end of this video, I will walk you through some of the benefits of uh, just taking that trial or becoming a fully fledged member of the site. And uh, there are a lot of advantages. Do not miss it. Hang around to the end for that. But for now, I'm gonna go get a coffee because... Oh, bro. That's not good, bro. We've got to sort that out. And then we're gonna check out Megadeth drummer Dirk Verbuden hearing Mr. Brightside for the first time and doing a one-time listen and playthrough. Let's check it out. Five minutes later. All right, headphones check, coffee check, just before we hit play. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Ah, it's a good vintage, let's do it. This is, excuse me, a damn fine cup of coffee. I you would know about that please. Do you know that song? No, I don't. I just have to say, this is this is blowing my mind right now. I'm so glad you don't know this me song. Me too. Let me put my gloves on for this. That actually sounded a lot like one of the fills in the song. I'll stop it here. A original video link in the description of all my videos. Now, I get critiqued a lot on the channel, and it's okay. I can handle the critiques that, oh, you call yourself a drum teacher, you've never heard of this song. So here's the reverse, right? Here here we are checking out a drummer who hasn't heard or played a song that I know extremely well. I was in a corporate covers band for 16 years, a band that I began. I started that band myself. And this was one of the highlight songs of the night. Played it at, I think we must have just about played this at every gig. It always brought the house down. Anyway, just, just something that I thought I'd better add. Uh, let's keep it going. I'm Dirk Verbuen from Megadeth. Mostly throughout my life, I have been playing all sorts of metal music. I listen to all kinds of different things. I grew up listening to a lot of pop and rap slash hip hop and electronic okay. music. Uh, nowadays, I also listen to a lot of jazz and fusion, rock and roll, punk, you name it, you know, all kinds of different things. Drumming wise, what I mostly do is at least somewhat rock related. So as much as I have studied jazz and enjoyed uh, I don't feel like I'm quite ready to be in a jazz trio. So if you if you guys are gonna play me a jazz song, I'm I'm gonna run away. <laughs> yeah, we'll load up the track. I love the humility of these guys. These guys are so self-aware. Another thing that always comes through is to be a teacher. I'm I'm getting really selfish on this video. I'm thinking a lot about myself here for some reason. I don't know why, but people say, "How can you be a teacher? You don't do class because you can't play metal. You don't have a double kick." There's way too much going on in all these genres to play everything. No one can play everything. And before you hit me in the comments with insert drummer here can play everything, they can't. <laughs> I'm just gonna, hey, I don't know why, but I'm getting a bit spicy today, so be careful out there. And yeah, you ready? Let's do it. Yeah, it's amazing you won't know this. You would know this now. Please. So he's not hearing those drums. He's hearing drums. Imagine trying to Imagine trying to compose a drum part for a drumless track quick. Real quick. Engineers watching you, you're on Drumio and you've got to come up with something. I've said it before, I'll say it again. It's a scary concept. I would be terrified. So most of them do take notes. Except Chad's me. We killed it. That's a great part of the song. tricky ending endings when you're doing things this quick 
bum, bum, bum. That can be tricky to just get that in exactly the right place, but it could be the cherry on top of the recording. I just have to ask, do you know that song? No, I don't. But I now have the song structure. <laughs> One listen? Wow. So cool. I just have to say, this is this is blowing my mind right now. What was I'm that? I'm so glad you don't know this song. No, yeah, I don't. I, I yeah, it's it's. Uh, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't even know what band it is to be honest. So I have no idea. I, I might have heard it before. I don't know because it wow. sounds like something I might have heard before. But I definitely don't listen to this band or know this band very well. So. Well, we won't tell you what it is until no, the end. So don't. You know, this might be fun for people to know. So I do this when I do session work in the studio, which I've done tons of. I've developed a method to just, you know, when you listen to a song the first time, just count, you know, name the parts. Oh, I cannot stress enough how important it is to have some type of system, even if you're not hugely musically uh, literate and you are, do need to make up your own system, you need something. If you're going in the studio, you need something. Um, you need to have a bit of a concept, I think, of at least bars and numbers of bars, how long a section is. Mostly because things can change. I've been in the studio many a time where things have changed on the fly and they expect you to get it, you know, they want, well, they at least want you to get it on the next take. And if you can make a little note that this four bar section is now a two bar section you can see it you've got a visual on it you connect that to your um, body and how you feel the song and then the next playthrough you can nail it without that it can be very tricky i mean you can do it i'm not going to say you can't do it you can do it it's just it's very handy tools i uh, count the bars and then at least if anything you have a structure so in this case that's all you need since there's no drums i can make up my own which Thank you guys, very generous of you. <laughs> so me having at least the structure, you know, I'm not saying I'm gonna maybe read this perfectly, but at least I'll have some idea of where I am and uh, have a few of the accents on there, you know, a few a few little things I noticed on the bass and like the ending of the song and stuff. And so yeah, cool. let's try this. I'm excited to try it. Let me put my gloves on for this. It's getting serious. So that's where the drums come in on the track. Interesting. Oh! It's playing at half time. Very, very tidy. This is the Tom part in the original. Okay. That is what happens in the song. Crash or crash ride in this pub. This is very close. He's completely nailed the sections. Stop. So 
this is the meter of the song. This is the feel. Damn it. <laughs> You're hired. <laughs> that was sick. I was like, I know those three hits are coming somewhere. And yeah, boom, I, was, boom, yeah, yeah I got a little sidetracked in my, uh, in my thing. But yeah, anyway, yeah, that was fun. That was great, man. <laughs> Thanks. Killed Clearly it. your chart worked. Uh -huh, yeah, one, yeah. one listen and one playthrough. Yeah, I mean. But, but one listen, one playthrough. And then hit record. So you can emulate that kind of real world pressure at home. You can go up to Drumio. They've got every song in the database. We'll, we'll get to this at the end, but they've got every song in the database. Just select Drumless. For, pick a song you don't even know. Pick an easy one. You can go through levels. Uh, beginner sort of level drumming. Uh, choose Drumless and just listen to it. Write out a chart. Play it. Record it. Give it a go. I mean, it's... It is such a powerful learning tool. But that's the thing, you know, that that's like, it's like, I mean, I compare it to, to, to the instrument, like learning to pick up music quickly. If you can do that, if you can practice that, it, it can become a really useful tool if you want to be a, you know, do this as a job, because a lot of times there's no time, like when you do session work. Uh, sometimes when I have really complex stuff, because I get asked to do some really crazy, <laughs> sometimes I have to do a like, bit detailed charts, you know, and really work at it before. In general, what I've learned is that there's usually not as much time to prepare as you'd like to. So if you go into it with the mindset of like, I'm just gonna do the best I can do with, with the time I have, you know, it's usually a, mm. a good place to start. People would be surprised, I think, and shocked. I remember having Adam Tobik, one of the great local drummers on my podcast, and I think I can't remember how we got onto it. I think I might have asked him something along the lines of what would you think, you know, drummers would find surprising about what you do as a session drummer around town? Um, you know, some of the surprising things about what you're doing. And I think this is exactly what he said. He said, people will be amazed at how little time you get. I've encountered it too. You hear the saying, time is money? Well, if you're in a studio, time literally is money. The more time you take to get a track, the more the producer or the or the group who's hired you, the more they've got to pay. <laughs> it's time. You're paying by the hour a lot of the time or paying for a day. Um, and it is, you do feel that subtle pressure. Whenever I've been in the studio, I always feel like, damn, you know, like someone's paying for this. Like it's up to me to get my pre-production and my house in order and actually come in and do a good job otherwise you know it's not a very professional job but yeah people would be i think people would be very surprised at how little time was taken and was given even on probably some of your favorite songs or favorite albums often they, they just got to get it done and sometimes you know they might get a first or a second take i mean if it's a world-class drummer like this guy here then you know, they they can do it in one or two takes. Want to hear the original? Yeah, let's hear it. What's this band? Tell me. The band is the two Killers. Hands. Okay. Sixteen of them. Yes. The song is Mr. Brightside. Okay. Which is a, a classic, and this is Ronnie Venucci on drums, and we are uh, definitely Ronnie sending Benucci. him your version of this once <laughs> this is out. <laughs> <laughs> 
And we'll, uh, we'll get Ronnie up here to play the original, and maybe we can mash them all up. <laughs> all right, sounds good. Ronnie, Ronnie don't hate monster. me. I, I did my best, man. <laughs> I, th I think you'll dig it. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> nice. Okay, here's the original version. This is with the drum part in there. 16th note. He's going to be surprised at the 16th note part. Two-handed. He was really close on this part. Such a good song. Such a great drum part. This bit's so cool in the song. Yeah, man. Badass. I have to say, I can see why it's a classic hearing it like now, you know, like the whole thing. Energy. Yeah, it's a killer song. I can kill her song. Killer Jeez. song. Uh, you walked right into that <laughs> one. I did. <laughs> um, no, I can, I can totally see how that would like be, rule on stage and how people would just go crazy. And mm. great drum part, like very well, you know, very well balanced. And uh, yeah, some, uh, I know I hit the crash can at the same time as him at one point. I was like, yeah, yeah I nailed one thing. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but uh, no, it was great, great drumming and, and very, yeah, very balanced and very tasteful and fills in the right place and uh, super cool. Yeah, I love it, man, love it. It's, uh, <laughs> this was fun. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that was uh, my, my best shot here on, uh, here's a song for the first time, uh, courtesy of Drumio. <laughs> I hope I didn't let you guys down too much. I had fun doing this, and uh, this is something that you know. Again, if you wanna, if you wanna have a gig playing an instrument, it's a good idea to get really, you know, to get some kind of technique going for you to to uh, learn songs fast Big and at technique. least get the basic hang of a song structure. Obviously, for us drummers, like having the song structure together, which I uh, royally screwed up in the end when I missed the, the closing hits. It's an important thing, and also sight reading whatever whatever notes you take, or you know, here's the thing: a lot of times you're not going to have time to memorize everything you have to learn, so you need to have some kind of tricks. You know, I've uh, I've even had charts on stage sometimes, and you know, not yeah, not my favorite thing to do, but I've I've been in that position, and when you when that's what you need, you do it. So, anyways, this was great. Oh man, didn't disappoint. Did not disappoint. So what I'm going to do now, uh, there's every one of these Drumio videos I'm left, I mean, it's just constant. There's just ideas and there's things that I want to mention constantly throughout these videos. But one thing I want to take you guys through, because you can pick up, you can get access to all of this for free, follow my trial, follow my 30 day trial and you can, you can check this out. So if we go to songs down on the left hand side here, and then I'm going to type in Mr. Brightside. So as you can see, straight away comes up <laughs> Dirk Verbuden's uh, version that we just watched. And then the actual um, song, Mr. Brightside. Now, if I click on this, now check this out. Guys, free, free resources. They got 6,000 plus songs in here, by the way. So they give you a level. They're calling this intermediate. It's, you know, it's a little bit here and there, like levels, you know, it gives you an idea at least. Uh, drums removed as an option, as they're saying. So let's click on Mr. Brightside. If we go to resources, PDF sheet music, guys, you can go ahead and download the PDF. So that is awesome. And you can see we've got uh, how many pages is this one? Four pages that you can just download. And again, it's free on my trial. It's unbelievable. Now, the other thing we can do here is, let's click on this. Uh, another cup of this, another sip, sorry, of this. Lovely vintage. Now, we can go through and learn the song along with the transcription. So check this out, I'll just hit play. I mean, this is just crazy. Crazy that we got access to this. So you can see that it tracks along with the drum part. You can follow along, you can learn it. 
Now obviously this song is reasonably high tempo and there's quite a bit going on. There's a lot of 16th notes, there's awkward open hi-hats on R's and ands as you can see here in bar 6. So let's say uh, just for argument's sake you're having trouble getting those open hi-hats because that's going to be an open hi-hat on the left and then an open hi-hat on the right. So what we can do, we just click, drag, we can loop the section. Now if you were having trouble with that part, not, you not only can loop the section, you can slow it down. Let's slow it right down to 60%. Check this out. Yep, right. One of the big tips uh, for learning the drums is to play slow. Slow things down. There's no shame in that at all. And you know what? As you pick it up, you know, you might want to speed up the tempo. Let's take it up to 7. Day or two more on it, you might have it up to 80. Now we're getting closer, right? Let's take it up to 90. That's what it sounds like. And then full speed. And don't tell me you're not interested in hearing Chipmunk's version of Mr. Bison. You know you are. So, yeah, it's just absolutely crazy and without flogging a dead horse here. Guys, I, I think a lot of people don't understand a lot of the educators out there, like myself, who just could not believe that this existed within the Drumio site. 6,000 plus songs. I got students asking to learn I don't, 40, 50 songs, you know, different students asking multiple different songs per week. I can find it in Drumio. I've got a bunch of my private students on Drumio as well. And, you know, there's, there's no turning back. Trust me, there's no turning back once you see what is available over there. So I think, oh, I mean, where do you even start with this performance? It is really surprising, isn't it? That someone, a drummer, a professional musician could not have heard this song and could not have no one that this is the killers i mean it is just such an iconic song as i said i played in a corporate covers band so i've been very exposed to it it is a huge song it is in the in the covers world in new zealand at least this is in the stratosphere of like a don't stop believing an eye of the tiger a sweet child of mine like sweet home alabama a brown eyed girl it is it is an in that level if not above it it was probably i would i would say this was probably the biggest song every night that we did a gig the interesting thing with this song actually was that it was big with any crowd so i mean even if we were playing like a, a sleepy gig with not a huge amount of people private wedding or something and everyone's been there since nine o'clock and they're very very drunk and very sunburnt and you know they're like oh, where's the cab play this and all of a sudden everyone's got their energy back up and they're just like losing their minds so it's it's just one of those songs it's just a it's a great song it's a great song and ronnie vanucci i mean what an absolute legend uh one of my favorite drummers ronnie vanucci he's right up there for me his drum parts are just so brilliant. Uh, the Killers in general, I'm a big fan of The Killers. I just love the whole vibe, the 80s new wave kind of thing. And uh, one other random one, check out their cover of Electric Blue. Um, that was <laughs> something out of the blue and it was amazing. Anyway, let's get back to this. So I guess so many lessons, but there's no need to ever feel status anxiety about not knowing a song like you guys might be out there going oh that's bs he's definitely heard that trust me trust me he's he's not lying i have played with world class musicians who are freakishly good and we'll do songs that are on a set list or on a on a in a show or whatever and they've never heard it and i'm like are you serious you've never heard hotel california and they're like yeah and it goes on and on. I've done, I remember doing a show with a bass player who was easily, easily the best bass player I've ever played with. 
completely world class and is doing world class gigs at the moment, actually. And um, living on a was it living on a prayer or it was it was a one of the big Bon Jovi hits, and um, they popped up on our set list, and we were, we were sight reading everything on this show, and it came up, and he's looking at it, and he's like, uh, Bon Jovi, living on a prayer. And I'm like. <laughs> You don't know living on a prayer, Bon Jovi, and he's like, no. It's like, wow. So status anxiety, don't get this mixed up. You do not need to know every song. Nobody knows every song. One hundred thousand songs each day are uploaded to Spotify. You have got no chance of knowing every song. So just forget about that. That's my first learning. My first takeaway from this. I feel a bit. More <laughs> validated for not knowing a lot of the songs that you guys request uh, so thanks for that Dirk um, I thought his drum part was excellent absolutely excellent there were times where it really really closely mirrored the part even with the ba -dun -da -ba -dun -da, even got one of those in there uh, which he said he, he did note down some of the accent the bass accents and stuff so maybe it was off that um, ensemble band figure but, you know, that is a figure that happens on the drums in the song. So it's interesting he got that. It's interesting he went to the crash or crash right in the same parts. Halftime in the verses. Wow, I did not expect that. And I would not. It's hard to say. I was going to say I would not never hear that in the song. But I'm completely biased because I know the song so well. I played it so many times. I just automatically think dun -ta, dun -ta, dun -ta, two hand and sixteenth note beat for the verses, which he didn't do at all. He didn't do any two hand and sixteenth note beats. So really interesting that he was feeling that as a halftime. Now halftime is a term I use a lot on this channel. What is halftime? So there's different ways of feeling music. There's different ways of feeling pulse. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, standard time. Two, three, four, half time. One, two, three, four. This hasn't changed. How I'm feeling it and where I want to put my snare backbeat. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. It, that is a really quick and rough explanation of halftime. So he was feeling that as a halftime, which was cool because he could do a gear shift and take it up for the choruses and the pre-choruses. Super awesome. If you are at all a fan of the Killers, I would suggest going into Drumeo and checking out the transcription for Mr. Brightside. There is a lot going on in that song and there are some tricky hand foot combos, especially towards the end. Really cool. Ronnie Venucci is one of these drummers who is so slick and so well composed that it, on the surface you could think, oh, that's easy. But then you actually have a look at what he's playing and you look at the energy that he plays with live. Oh my God. The Killers live at Royal Albert Hall. Amazing. If you haven't seen that concert, oh my God. Um, but yeah, just so much stuff here. And I love the how self-aware and how grounded how calm he was he's just he just makes his chart makes his chart and he just says you know if it was a jazz song i'd be out of my depth or it wouldn't be uh wouldn't feel comfortable at least sorry not pro probably not out of his depth just wouldn't feel comfortable these guys are so cool man these guys and girls on drumming they're so cool they're so down to earth and that is what you get if you do go over to drumming you're getting this honesty, you're getting this integrity. And in today's world, with the way things are online, everybody gets a voice. It can we there's no lack of information. There's there's too much information, right? TMI, too much information out there. How do you know what to go with? How do you know who to study with? How do you know what's right and wrong? These guys are the best in the world. And they are so honest. So honest. The best drummers in the world. Ah, if it was a jazz song, I wouldn't do it. I, I couldn't do that. That transparency, that honesty, that self-awareness, that 
is what you want and that's what Dromeo offers. Absolutely 100% legit. No BS, just the real deal, which is what you want. You want you want and you need honesty if you're learning the drums. Anyway, rant over, amazing video, another 11 out of 10 video from Dromeo. Guys, original video link in the description of the video. Please do go along, check it out. Hit up my Drumio free 30 day trial. It's right there, it's, it's free, it's on me. Guys, if you would like to request a reaction, you can hit my PayPal, that is a direct line to me and I can guarantee your request. If you'd like to support the channel further, I do have a Patreon, it's just $5 a month. You get access to the blocked videos. If you don't wanna do either of those, but you do enjoy the channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button. That's always nice. And um, guys, without further ado, until next time, keep chopping wood. Ciao.